The calm water of the clear blue ocean looks inviting. The leaning palm trees sway in the ocean breeze. The sand from the beach glitters. The azure water of the ocean laps up to its edge. A natural rock wall runs along the shoreline. You notice a log lying on the beach. You are pleased your adventuring clothes and hat still fit you. Life as a king hasn't ruined your shape. Yet. You look under the log and discover a clam lying beneath it. You pick it up. There are some plants growing around this rock. The sea is somewhat calmer to the north. A group of rocks jut out of the ground. Their pointed shapes discourage their use as a place to sit. A picket fence extends onto the beach a short way. There is a large rock in the ocean a short way from shore. Small waves lap at the edges. You see a low white fence. While still intact, it's showing its age and looks as if it will soon need some repair. It is a mailbox. This is the first time you have ever set eyes upon one, which isn't surprising. The postal system won't be invented for another few centuries to come. The residents of this land must either possess clairvoyance or just simply be ahead of their time. The roof looks weather-worn but still leak-free. The quaint cottage is, for the most part, well-managed and orderly. Someone has obviously put a lot of effort into its upkeep. You feel that you might be welcome here. What a gorgeous flower bed! A row of red flowering plants grow happily in this well-tended plot. The door of the little cottage is kept closed. You decide to respect that. You open the mailbox. Inside there is, incredibly, a letter addressed to the resident. You decide to leave it in there. A card has been dropped in it also. You read it. You replace the card and close the mailbox. You attempt to open the door but find it is locked. You think you can hear the sound of labored breathing inside and decide against causing any further disturbance. This large fallen log is this large. You peer into the depths of the dark hole. As luck would have it, you discover a beautiful set of earrings hidden inside. Each one is laced with glittering diamonds and contains a lovely blue sapphire stone in the center. Perhaps someone stashed them here. At any rate, you take them into your possession. Three gold coins shimmer in a nearby patch of grass. You are traveling through Weirwood Forest. Indistinctive trees surround you in all directions. To the north, you notice an unusual tree with a curious door built into its trunk. You notice a thick rope dangling loosely against the trunk of the tree. Upon closer inspection, you see that the rope actually runs away from the tree and into the thick grass on the forest floor. This is obviously a trap.
As you pick up the gold coins, they suddenly turn dark. Now they resemble ordinary metal. Wait a minute. This isn't gold. It's fool's gold. Evidently, this tree forms part of a subterranean dwelling. A large brass bell sits atop the church. You have come to the church of Kalima. It is said that all are welcome, and that the monks living here often help those in need. A beautiful stained-glass window depicts a radiant full moon. It is certainly one of the more unique images you have seen on a church. The church door is made of very thick wood held together by iron bars. The door appears to be barred from the inside. The church must not be open at this time. The fool's gold again shines the instant the coins leave your hand. I still wish I had an owl to keep me company. Three coins in the fountain. What? Let me see. In his haste, the merchant pockets the coins without even looking at them. It seems he didn't even realize that they were fake. Uh-oh, looks like he's heading back to his stand. It is repressing. Three. What? Graham. Thank you, Graham. Here, take this. Maybe this useless trinket of hair of this will be of some use to you. So it's your right for not enabling me to protect my kids. The pumpkin hands you a gold brooch with a beautiful blue sapphire. 